David Kelly of IDEO and the D School, his observation is that design over time always reflects new tools. And then I would add to it that creative people always welcome constraints. You know, people are just are better when they, uh, when they have constraints. Sometimes a constraint is just budget and time. Um, and then to your question, which I think is a really good one, is there an irreducible minimum of what design is? And I think it's cognitive psychology. Um, having uh, worked in kind of advertising and game design and seeing apps, um, the different disciplines have different language um, for, you know, and also looking at storytelling for what feels right. So, you know, movies talk story and it's three acts. David Ogilvy in advertising can measure the difference between effectiveness of reversed out type or black on white. And I think we're going to find that the irreducible comes all the way down to fMRI brain imaging. <laughs> You know, it's what because you're trying to you're trying to create meaning and engagement from scratch, and sometimes the you know the meaning and engagement always comes in uh, uh, modern context. And I'd I'd expect that a three act movie structure and the Parthenon's golden mean structure probably fire up the same part of the brain. I think there's a really great example of that with London Underground. I think what we learned, what we're learning, and I'm sure you're learning the same in Jawbone uh, at Shazam, is that you have to set expectations with users. You have to kind of, they have to know what's coming. They have to know when something is slightly unfamiliar, they have to know what's coming. And so we spend a lot of time explaining that we're not recording your voice and sending it up to our servers so we can analyze and all that. That expectation setting matters a lot. And I was talking to some folks at the London Underground, uh, not the train drivers, and, uh, and they had a product problem a few years ago, which is that people perpetually believed that the London Underground was always late and always breaking down. And it was at one point. And they, it was at one point. And then they, oh, they, so they started tracking metrics just like we do, right? The same metrics, same kinds of metrics, just slightly different numbers. And they improved it to the point where actually trains were running within 90 seconds, 90 seconds apart on most of the most important lines. And uh, breakdowns were really becoming far less common and all of that. And the average commute times were coming down. Um, but people still did exactly what you just did, which is to say, well, yeah, but it's, it is broken. But the metrics actually showed that it really wasn't nearly as broken. And then they started uh, doing announcements uh, that said, um, uh, the London Underground is running a good service right now. If you've ever been on the London Underground, you know this, that every few minutes while you're waiting in the station, you'll hear the London Underground is running a good service. What they did before that was only tell you what the, when the trains were broken. There's a delay. And then all they did was shift it to say, actually, we'll also tell you when it's working just By fine. the way, that tends to work in parenting, too. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep I that in mind. Yeah, I love you, my daughter. <laughs> and in partnerships. Uh -huh. And in partnerships. <laughs> you know, the, um, so, you know, one irreducible is first impression. So in real estate, they call it curb appeal. And, um, you know, the uh, jawbone launched with uh, beauty and packaging with Pla clear plastic that made it, made the products look like gems, and um, and you know I think you see the same thing if you look at OK Cupid. First impressions matter. So curb appeal, uh, packaging, and that first impression when you walk up to a table to meet somebody that you've that you've been introduced to through Tinder or. Okay, good. <laughs> and, and you know, the, the cognitive psychology will show that uh, if you have a first, and same thing with movies with the preview house in Hollywood, a uh, first impression dramatically changes what's possible afterwards. And so is there, so I think what's in common with uh, uh, landscape architects and package designers and apps, you know, the first time you see the Shazam bug on TV, it better feel like an aha and feel good. If you look at it and it looks like shit, you're going to have about the same long-term relationship with Shazam that you'd have if you walked up to somebody in a blind date and, um, you know, they look scraggly or ill-kempt unless you like scraggly and ill-kempt. <laughs>